Good morning, good people of Denton First Cumberland Presbyterian Church and anyone who might be listening today. Um, my name is Reverend Dusty Luthy, and I'm just dropping in to do something we're trying to get through um, for a while called Wednesday in the Word, where we um, pause midweek and we um, tackle a little bit of the Word of God and whether it um, connects with the sermon prior or um, the sermon coming up. Um, that's kind of what we're doing. This is a huge week, um, it feels like, for our church. I know the ladies are playing music this morning. They're practicing. Um, and <clears throat> for all intents and purposes, if the music is that good on Sunday, I don't need to say a word because God is going to be worshipped and we are going to have a wonderful time in fellowship together. So I'm um, super excited about the music for Sunday and whatever they're working on for the future. It's just beautiful. Um, but this Sunday, we have Holy Communion coming up. We have the installation of our new elder class. We're celebrating the denominational um, birthday. So um, the birthday of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church back in 1810. And um, let's see, we're also gonna celebrate Super Bowl Sunday, S-O-U-P-E-R, um, Super Bowl Sunday by taking up a love offering for um, our daily bread. And let me look on the calendar. Yeah, I think that's it. But that's a huge day for us. That's a big worship day. So super excited to get going with that. But I did want to take a moment um, and commemorate another thing that we're celebrating, um, or at least commemorating, and that's Black History Month. And um, <clears throat> it seems maybe at this time of the year, it's um, super important to reflect on and just pause for a moment and understand um, our history um, just as a culture and what it means to celebrate um, our African-American brothers and sisters and their contributions to our society. But first I wanna touch on um, a few scriptures in Psalm 111. This is the Psalm that we touched on Sunday um, that I preached from. And we talked about the proper worship of God and making sure that we have a big enough vision of God and that our God is bigger and better and bolder and brighter than we could ever imagine. And that um, we lift God up to be worthy of our worship. Um, but a couple of verses stand out to me. And so hear the word of the Lord today from Psalm 111. And I'm reading verses four and five. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, I'm fascinated by the word remember because the word remember is used so often in scripture. And in fact, I took some time to look at it in um, the Strong's um, Concordance <clears throat> that we have here in the library. And the root word of remember or remembrance or remembered is used 268 times um, throughout the Bible. And it's specifically used in the Old Testament, particularly in Psalms. And it's talking about God who remembers as if God for, could forget, because that can't be one of God's attributes. If God is infinite and God is perfect, then God does not forget. Um, so it's interesting to me that God continues to say, I will not forget and I will remember. It's like we need that reminder that God is those things. And so we have to pause and remember because that's what it tells us to do. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. And so as we recognize the good works of a good God, sometimes we have to see these evidences of good works and a good God in conjunction with the bad works of evil and sin and the way those things have manifested in our lives and in the lives of our faith ancestors. Um, for God's people, Particularly, we talked about how um, when the scripture would have been written, this psalm was written, um, you know, the Messiah was not here. They were still waiting for it. And so the works of God were really manifested in the Exodus story. Um, when God led his Hebrew people out of slavery, out of Egypt. Well, we have to remember that um, a God who saves, what, what are we saved from? We're saved from sin. We're saved from um you know, ourselves and, and just the, the evilness of this world. And that's, um, it's beautiful, our um, salvation. 
but we have to remember what we're saved from. And for the Egyptians, it was slavery. It was oppression. It was brutal work conditions. And so um, a couple years ago, I ran into a gentleman and we were talking about kind of what a unicorn I am. I'm a female in ministry. And not only that, but I'm a, I was at the time a female in seminary and I was a female who feels called to the pastorate. And those, even in our society today with a lot of gender equality, that's still, um, that's still kind of rare. And so I was telling him about my journey um, going to Memphis Theological Seminary and how much I loved it. And as a white person, it was so good for me um, to be around a community that was 50% African American and how our context was set in Memphis, which was a huge, huge central um, force in the civil rights movement and how much of our curriculum was focused on the civil rights movement and the way faith worked in that and also social justice components as we work to realize the kingdom of God here on earth and how important that was um, for our school. And this gentleman said, you know, that's the problem. People keep wanting to talk about it, meaning slavery and the civil rights movement and oppression and all of these things that, um, you know, black people have had to endure um, for centuries. And he said, people keep wanting to talk about it and bringing it up instead of forgetting about it and moving on. And I just remember being kind of appalled um, because that's certainly a sentiment I think a lot of people have is that why can't we just move on? Like, let's forget about it. Let's, let's move forward. Um, but I told him that day that, that I disagreed and that I thought the problem um, is that folks don't want to talk about it. That that's the real problem and that um, people want the past and the history just to go away and just to go away unjustly. Um, and so hopefully that day, maybe I planted a seed in his head about how important it is to talk about the things, the ugly things that we do want to forget. Last week, we talked about the calling of the disciples and how Matthew, the tax collector forever is known by his sinful occupation, um, not by his repented identity as a follower and disciple of Christ, but that tax collector is forever attached to his name. Um, and so it's good for us to talk and discuss um, and remember, remember the good works and the good things, the civil rights movement and the voting um, act and, and integration of schools. And it's good to remember these good things, but we also have to remember um, the trials and the tribulations and the struggles that our brothers and sisters have endured. Um, as we remember these things, we, um, we, can, we can continue to heal. Right? Again, remember what we are being saved from. Remember. Remember. And so we celebrate the good. We celebrate the good and, and our media and Hollywood has done a really good job of taking individuals like hidden figures, um, the ladies who, um, you know, were mathematicians and, and work to, um, you know, there's that storyline in that, that movie that's out now. Um, you know, Jackie Robinson in 42, that story's been highlighted. Um, of course, there's all sorts of different information on Martin Luther King, and we celebrate that. But we also want to celebrate the little known heroes, um, folks that we don't always talk about. Um, one of my professors at seminary, the Reverend Dr. Courtney Pace, wrote a book about Prathia Hall, one of the most prolific civil rights icons that no one talks about. Um, she was instrumental in the civil rights movement, um, especially as a minister herself, and inspired the words of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. That was Dr. Um, Prathia Hall. Um, but we don't talk about her. Um, she's not in our list of icons that we go through. Um, in the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, we celebrate um, Edmund Weir, who was the first ordained African American in our denomination. He was a former slave and was also our first ordained missionary um, who went to Africa to do ministry. And unfortunately, um, you know, there's no pictures of him. There's pictures of our other uh, faith ancestors in the Cumberland Church, but there's no pictures of, of Edmund Weir that we know of. Um, and that's, that's something to be remembered and to understand um, that discrepancy that comes with white and black. Um, 
that's a huge forefather um, of our faith as Cumberland Presbyterians. And had he been white, of course there would have been some sort of caricature, some sort of drawing um, that would have gone with that. And so every time we remember Rosa Parks, we need to remember Emmett Till. Um, Emmett Till, who was lynched for supposedly, um, you know, his interactions with a white woman that afterwards were recanted. And so he was unfairly killed. And so we remember. Um, we remember the hard parts of history, but we also take pride in being able to celebrate good accomplishments, the wondrous works of God. But in order to recognize the wondrous works, sometimes we have to recognize the not wondrous works and the times when mercy was not granted and grace was not given. And so if we struggle um, this month, I hope it's a good struggle and that we remember our past and our present and our future and that God is among it. Um, God is the one who remembers. God will not forget. Um, so today, this week, this month, spend some time remembering um, the good, but don't forget the bad as we remember what we are saved from um, and what we move forward toward. All right, let me pray with you this morning. Almighty God, I give you thanks, Lord, um, for our past, for our presence, and our futures, and the way you work among them. God, we give you thanks for being a God who remembers, a God who doesn't forget. Lord, the only thing you forget um, are our sins, Lord, but still you use our pasts, God, in the ways that we have transgressed, Lord, to move your kingdom to the future, to give you glory, Lord, because we know what we are saved from. God, I give you thanks for... Um, our African-American brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, um, for the contributions that they have given to our society, Lord. Um, we ask for forgiveness for any time where we do not honor each other um, in our entire beings, Lord, whether it's due to color or, or gender or other identities, God. We know that we are all made as one creatures, as one creature under you, made in your image, the image of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks, y'all.